Good morning, River House. This is Pastor Jordan. I want to start with a verse this morning from the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 21. This is the last verse in the book of 1 John. It says, little children, guard yourself from idols. I've thought before that that's a strange way to end a letter, uh, but I think that John is you know, putting this as the exclamation point. And really the essence of John's literature in this book is he's encouraging us to live a life of union, a life of abiding in the love of Jesus Christ. And so he ends this letter with this exclamation point, guard yourselves from idols, because idols are the things that actually take us out of union with Christ. They're actually what distract us from a life of abiding. So what do I mean abide? I want, you know, I want, to, I want to make this practical. I want to cast a vision for what this can be because this is a great spiritual term and a spiritual thought. In John 15, we abide in the vine and bear great fruit. You know, but what does this look like? Is it actually possible to live continuously in the presence of God? Yes, it is. Just a, a couple testimonies that, that I've just, from my own study in these days, St. Francis of Assisi, his first convert, his first disciple was named Bernard. He was a very wealthy man in Assisi. And he was drawn to Francis because he saw the grace of God on his life. So he said, hey, I want you to come stay at my house because he wanted to watch what Francis did, how he prayed, what he, that made him so holy. And so they're sleeping in the same bedroom in separate beds. Francis faked to go to sleep. Bernard started to fake to go to sleep and started acting like he was snoring. And Francis, as soon as he heard the snoring, got out of bed, fell on his knees, looked up to heaven and with weeping throughout the entire night, said the same words, the same prayer throughout the entire night until the morning dawn. My God, my God, my God my God. And Bernard sat and listened to the young Saint Francis caught up in devotion through the whole night. There's another man named Brother Lawrence who testified that for the last 30 years of his life, he lived continuously in the manifest presence and the peace and the joy and the delight of God. And that he actually experienced God's presence more powerfully in the kitchen working and cooking for hundreds of people a day than he did even in set times of prayer. It's examples like these that cast a vision for what God has invited you and me into. But the truth is that idols are actually what take us and distract us away from this type of living. You know, I used to think that idols were beneath me, especially when I was young and zealous and I'd got rid of all my external bad sins, uh, but really in recent time of my life, as I've tried to become more intently focused on living and staying and remaining in the peace that nourishes my soul and not partnering with anxiety and all these things, I have found that my soul is so prone to idolatry. It distracts me. It steals my affections. It pulls me out from God. It causes me to forget Him. Right? And very simply defined, an idol is anything that we think about more than we think about God, right? So a life free of idolatry is a life of abiding by definition because we would constantly be consumed with God. That is what it means. Right? So I just want to give a testimony uh, of even in this time, the last week, uh, of what the Lord's been doing in my life because I believe that in this season, God is doing a work and he's tearing down things, tearing down idols. He wants to remove them. This is part of the deconstruction process, right? And for me, uh, I found that in my prayer times, the thoughts that continuously for the last few days of my life that have been intruding into my secret place have been all about the stock market uh, and I had lost money in the stock market and then the stocks were falling down low and then it's like, hey, I can invest and I could maybe double my money. And I literally found morning after morning as I would come and I'd be literally reading the Psalms, engaging in the scripture, I would vacillate between the peace of God and then thinking about the stock market and my own personal finances to the point 
that I actually left my prayer time to go and check my stock account because I wanted to see, did the investments that I make, is it going up or is it going down? And uh, by the Lord's grace, it was like I got stopped. And it was like, why am I so consumed thinking about the stock market? that I can't come and be consumed by you. Why is this? This is producing anxiety. This is producing all these things. You know, and literally on the spot, I was convicted in my heart that this is an idol. This is something that's consuming my thought more than God. And on the spot, I was like, I don't want this. I sold everything, shut down my account uh, because quick obedience is always the best obedience. And literally, I immediately stepped into the joy and the grace of God. And it was like a heavy yoke got broken off of me, right? That's because it was an idol for me. That may not be an idol for you, but this morning, I just believe in this time, God is inviting us to something so much more than a life that's so full of these lesser affections and these lesser loves that produce nothing but anxiety, turmoil, stress, striving, right? And my guess is that in this time, there's, there's thoughts, there's things that are consuming you, they're filling your minds, right? And times like these are exposing. It's been exposing for me. And I share this as a testimony and I hope to give you courage that it may be exposing for you, but I wanna encourage you that in the midst of the exposing, in the midst of recognizing that there may be things that are idolatry in your life, let's get rid of them. Let's be like Gideon and let's cut those altars down. Let's cut the Asherah poles down because freedom, right? The joy and the peace that is on the other side of a life of worship, it's worth it. So I wanna encourage you this morning to actually spend time, open your heart and, and invite the examination of the spirit of God into your life. And, and, and honestly, allow him to reveal anything, any love, any attraction, any affection that, that actually takes more of your thoughts than Jesus does. Right? If you have Jesus, you have everything. And if you do not have Jesus, you have nothing. If you have Jesus, you have more treasure than all the world can hold. But if you have forfeited Jesus, you have lost more than we can even fathom. Little children, guard yourselves from idols. Don't let them linger any longer. Embrace the deconstruction. Actually partner with God and tear them out of your life. I have found a deeper peace and, and have stepped into the grace of God. And that's just my own little testimony. I want to be pure. I want to be holy. I want to live a life of worship. And I know that you do too. That's why you're tuning into this message. So I bless you this morning. And I ask Spirit of God that you will come and examine our hearts and you will expose and reveal any unclean way, any idolatry, any affection that's lesser than Jesus. And give us the courage to partner with you to remove it out of our lives today. In Jesus' name, God bless you and we'll see you tomorrow morning.